all right what's up y'all so welcome back so let's watch this video by maven this one is how much money did i make it's a wwe wrestler so let's watch hey guys maven huffman here former wwe superstar one of the questions i get asked all the time maven how much did you make during your time in the wwe well hey that's a personal question but i'm willing to answer what i'm going to be sharing with you during this video is how wrestlers get paid the difference in the top guys the bottom guys and all us guys in between also our i heard that a lot of them like the smaller dudes had to do it to damn near free to like a little piece of change and a lot of them had to pay for like their own like travel their own hotels like a lot of it they have to pay for it themselves so the pay isn't always good i heard expenses did the wwe pay for all those expenses answer might shock you and finally in the end i'm gonna tell you exactly how much i made during my run in the wwe and i'm gonna tell you that answer it's going to it's gonna be interesting now to begin we have to describe the difference between downside guarantees and pay sheets now disclaimer this is how it was when i was there from 2001 through 2005. i don't currently know how these guys get paid that are wrestling now i can only explain how how it was for me to begin downside guarantee what does that mean a downside guarantee is guaranteeing a wrestler how much they're going to make no matter if they're on the road or if they're at home injured the first ever downside guarantee that i ever signed right after tough enough was for fifty thousand dollars what this stated he was just pulled out no racks. he just pulled the racks out of nowhere like hello <laughs> they just sitting there how many matches that i wrestled whether it was a hundred or get a if dollar. i got injured and had no matches for the entire year i was guaranteed to make fifty thousand dollars came out to about a thousand dollars a week the whole year no matter what this is exactly is how real? much i was going to make no matter if i was injured no matter what i was going to make this for the year now the other way to get paid in the wwe at the time money. was through pay sheets now pay yeah, sheets was fake. definitely the way to go where the downside offered you security and you knew exactly how much you were getting paid pay sheets offered you a unlimited earning potential guys would make so much depending on two things a percentage of the ticket sales you know for every show and you would get paid depending on your level in the card so if you were in one of the first you know one two or three matches of the evening you're obviously going to get paid less if you were in one of the top three matches and and definitely if you were in the main event you were going to get paid more i might get sense. paid five hundred dollars just for wrestling the match for a non-televised event when you're on pay sheet so four shows five hundred dollars each and every day you can do the math so when you're on pay sheets depending on where you are in the card depending on the attendance the sold ticket sales for the week you would make around two thousand dollars per week now that's on pay sheets if you're on your downside you'd make a thousand Obviously, you can see exactly why pay sheets were the more lucrative option and why most everyone decided to get paid this way rather than this way. Now, regardless whether you decide to be on pay sheets or on a downside guarantee, the issue of pay-per-view would come up. And it's a good issue to have because no matter where you are, as long as you were in the pay-per-view, you were going to get a bonus. And a lot of times, it's a pretty healthy bonus. A lot of guys would look forward to the pay-per-view every month because they knew it was mm -hmm. a way to not only supplement, but add to an already good income with mm -hmm. the network now i know they pretty much did away with that but back then it truly mattered to us because we were going to get a percentage of every person that paid to watch that wow. pay-per-view pay-per-views could run between 40 50 almost up to 89 dollars for the pay-per-view depending on which one it was so your survivor series your your wrestlemanias your unforgivens your backlashes these would cost a lot of money and we reap the benefits. We would get a percentage of each and every pay-per-view sold and put into each and every person's home. So an average run-of-the-mill pay-per-view might pay you as much as $6,000 for that one show. Now, 
again. Oh my God. That's for a mid card guy, which I was, you know, and depending on obviously my position in the card for that night. But let's say on average it was just a run of the mill, middle, middle of the card match and a regular pay-per-view, a backlash, for instance. My pay for that might be around about $6,000. Now, <laughs> what's great about this is you never knew exactly what it was going to be. You might have a, a great headlining match or there might be a storyline that people are really into. So you know going into each and every pay-per-view, your earning potential could be through the roof. Now, the most I ever made on a pay-per-view, and forgive me, I forget exactly which one it was because I'm old, but the most I ever made was right there, 30 grand, one show, one night. What and show? it was a. How long was the match? Oh, wow. Amazing feeling. Now, remember, I was a mid card guy. I was a guy who was middle of the rung, wasn't the lowest, wasn't the highest. But main event guys, one of the guys I knew made this consistently. That's 100 grand per pay-per-view each and every month. As long as he stayed healthy, he knew that was coming in. Obviously, wow. I'm not disappointed with that. I, I was ecstatic either. with that. But you Compared can see which that. stack <laughs> pays better. So now that we know how a WWE oh superstar got paid, how much did I make in my best year? Well, <laughs> not 100,000. <laughs> he pulled his money Not 200,000. Not 300,000. Not even 400,000. Right around 430,000. Now that was my best year on pay sheets. And that was a year that I remained injury free. That was a year that I was on all the house shows. I was on overseas trips. I was on pay-per-views. I had a good run. I had a good storyline going. And the writing staff really utilized me for the entire year. Now the key to that wow. is remaining injury free. Yeah. Obviously, the moment you get injured, the moment you go back to your downside guarantee, you don't have the possibility of earning this much. So now that we this see looks. my best year, the year that I remained injury free, the year that I was in all the storylines, the year that I was in pay-per-views, overseas trips, royalties, payments coming in, what was my worst year? Well, a year that for more than two thirds of the year that I was nursing a broken leg and my downside guarantee being at 75,000 at the time, a little bit over 80 grand. That was my worst year in the WWE. Now, $80,000 is still nothing to sneeze at. And mind you, I didn't have to be on the road. I didn't have to pay for a rental car. I didn't have to pay for hotels. And my only job during this time was to try to build my body back up, try to get healthy enough so I could get back out, get back into storylines, get back into the mix. Because trust me, wrestling is like every other business, out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. Obviously, pay sheets is where you wanna be, but downside guarantee, you're still happy to have it when you have nothing else other than to do but to get back to being healthy. All right, well, looking at both of these stacks, this one's upsetting me a little bit, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Now, you look at this stack and you think that's a, that's a lot of money, but you forget about expenses. So let's talk a little bit about expenses and how $430,000 can get whittled down extremely quickly. Well, the first thing you gotta do is take half of it away for Uncle Sam. Right there, immediately. Oh, right. Around you know, 42 to 45% of that income is gone just for taxes. So that leaves you with this stack. Well, if you have a house or you own or you want to live someplace, immediately you can take a little bit more out for your housing. And let's say you have a car, car payment gone. While we're on the road, everybody thinks the <laughs> WWE pays for everything. They do not. We're paying our hotels. We're paying for food. We're paying for rental cars. And those expenses add up. If you have a good accountant, 
That'll help you and come back around when you do your taxes. But you got to think a little bit of expenses is going away as well, strictly for your on the road expenses. Now, other things, rainy day fun. Damn, that kind of just made me sad. I had the little money signs in my eyeballs. Everything was going cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And then we started talking about expenses and taxes. I forgot all about that. They got to pay that shit back. So it's like all of that gets a little bit overcut in half, like a little more than half. It's like you make all this money, you just got to, you got to give it right back. Funds might come up, your hot water heater might go out, your dog might get sick, your car might blow a That's tire reality, on the highway. Though. You're always going to have something come up. At the end of it, you might be left. Once you make that big pile of money, once you make your $430,000, <laughs> you might have this. And this is before you even save for anything. This is before you buy yourself clothing. This is before you maybe maybe you know, put a kid through school. This is before you even go grocery shopping. So the money, as quickly as it comes in, it goes out just as fast. Now, even though it's been over 18 years since I have wrestled for the WWE, I still get four quarterly checks from them every year. Now, how does that work? Royalties. Royalties are a great thing. Now, there's several ways that you can earn royalties as a former wrestler, obviously. And the one that paid us the most was DVD sales. Shortly behind that was action figures and video game sales. The way these guys have it running today, the network killed our DVD sales. So royalty checks have went down dramatically <laughs> over the years. But it's still a good surprise every time that mailbox opens up and I see that check coming from my old employer. So the main royalty that we would get obviously was through DVD sales. And on average, I would say my royalties uh, pre-network was around $5,000 every quarter. Now, that's a, that's a pretty good check for being out of a company for years and years, over a decade. But today it's a little bit different. With everyone having access to the WWE Network anytime they want and access to any pay-per-view and they don't have to go out and buy the DVD like they used to, my royalty payments now per quarter look more like that. I believe it. I hear that all the time. About $300 per quarter. <laughs> Quite a hit. Quite a hit. So one of the questions I get asked all the time, Maven, how much did you make in your time in the WWE? Well, it might be more, it might be less than you figured, but it's about There we have it, about right around $800,000. Obviously, you can see I saved every penny. <laughs> being able to see all 50 states, being able to go to 11 different countries, I would say I made out like a bandit. Now, I had the benefit of working with a lot of different superstars mm -hmm. in my time in the WWE. Were they cool? Were they jerks? Find out watching this. Bro, leave it up to the IRS to ruin some shit. Imagine you putting your, you doing something like this, like a wrestler, and you putting your body through all of this to make this money, and you gotta give that shit right back. Like, I earned this money physically. Literally, I earned this money, and I gotta give that shit right back. That just ruined it for me, but... How do you guys feel? Do you feel like it's worth it? Like, the, the, the amounts that he said that you know, that you can make, the amounts that he said that he made, do y'all feel like it's worth it? Just as long as you stay healthy, you know what I'm saying? Injury free. Do y'all feel like it's worth it or not? Because once he had to cut it down and like talk about all the expenses, now I understand like having to pay for like your own room and food and cars and all of that. I kinda, I get that, but like the other part, and then like your children, if you have kids and housing and all of that house, <clears throat> Once the IRS kind of gets involved, it's just like, ugh, that sucks. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one. Toodles.